When you wash the dishes, you need to put them away. They can't be all stacked up. Put them away. You need to take the trash out. Ooh, she was going in. Hey my beautiful peeps, my name is Shar and welcome to Shar TV. If you're my existing subscriber, I appreciate you coming on back. And if you're new to this channel, well, I hope you enjoy your stay enough that you decide to subscribe. Basically, I'm addicted to 90 Day Fiance and I give you quite a detailed review on what happened in the current episode. So today we're gonna kick it off with episode 8 and we're gonna talk about Corey and Evelyn. Evelyn has been so kind enough to let Corey sleep in the spare bedroom but they haven't spoken at all. She is adamant with him moving out but he says no he's not moving out and he's going to fight for the relationship. And she's essentially gonna have to force him out if she wants him out because he ain't going anywhere. So I'm just, I don't know what I'm writing right now. I'm just writing what's in my head. And I really just wanna prove to Evelyn that I'm sorry and I'm not gonna make any, I won't make any more mistakes. Since I asked him to leave, he's been writing his notes. I have more that he gave me. What does the notes say? It's, it's just a saying, you know. Give me another chance, give me another chance. Every time we have a problem, it's like, I promise you I'll do this, I promise you I'll do that. She doesn't want to entertain what he's saying, and in the last note, he did say that he'd respect her decision. Evelyn can't even process anything because they're still in the same home, although he's in a separate room, but they're still in the same home, so she can't even digest what happened. And just thinking about him, and seeing him just makes her really, really angry. Corey decides to give her some flowers. Yeah, like flowers are gonna make everything better. And she's like, listen, you giving me flowers, sending me notes, it's not gonna change my mind. I've already communicated to you that I don't want to be with you anymore and you need to leave. She's like, uh, you gonna sign the divorce papers? And Corey's like, I'm, I'm not going to, not at, at this moment. But then I'm going to have to start a legal That's process fine. against you, Corey. Why? Because I'm not going to accept it. I want you to give me another chance. I don't want to give up on this. I don't want this to be nasty. I don't want to have the landlords involved and police involved. But I will do that if you don't leave. Well, Corey is sticking to his guns, man. He's like, I'm not gonna leave. And if you serve me divorce papers, I'm gonna tear them up. Woo! That should be interesting. That's pretty much it with Corey and Evelyn. They were quite dry, nothing much was going on. And I know, I know that y'all are waiting to see Jenny and Summit's kitchen, if you haven't seen it already. I'll save that to the end. If you can't wait to the end, I do have timestamps so you can hop on over to see the mess. On to Ari and Benny. Nothing much went on with Ari and Benny. Ari and Avi did land safely in New Jersey. You know who I am? He says, I don't even know who I am. I've been flying for 24 hours. I'll just enjoy uh, watching this uh, wonderful eight month old crawl, walk, babble, laugh, poop. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Mom. Oh my God, it's so good to see you. You guys look great. Oh, I love so much. On the way home, she decides to call Benny, you know, just to make sure that he's all right. Hey, Benny. How are you? Hi, Ben Yum. How are you? I'm here with my mom, my dad, my nephew, Roman, and your little son. Hi, hi, everybody. Abby's listening to your voice. Say hi, Abby. <laughs> hi, Abby. I miss you guys. We miss you. What are you doing? Uh, I was uh, with my friend this. Okay. He sounds fine to me. The mom was like, you know, he sounds he sounds okay. And Ari's like, yeah. well, yeah, it seems like she was disappointed that he wasn't in tears or something like that. She is a bit concerned because they don't really do well with long distance. And even though she's not going to be away for that long, that is something that is of concern to her. I, I wonder what she means. Is she like scared that he's gonna cheat or what? Like, hmm. Ari is just loving being around her family and the attention that she's getting from her family and with Avi as well. And I felt kind of bad because she's like, you know, she doesn't get this kind of support 
or doesn't feel cared for in Ethiopia. I think she's talking about the sisters because let's be real, like they're not really that nice to her. That it's not a nice relationship. They're always bickering with each other. So at least being back home, she's actually feeling loved. Poor Ari's mom can't stand being away from her daughter and her grandchild and she's her goal is to actually convince them to move back to the US. And maybe she thinks that maybe that the communication will be better between them once Benny sees how they live in New Jersey. Ari's like, well, you know, I did make a promise to Benny that I'm coming back to Ethiopia, so I'm, I'm not gonna go back on what I said. I am gonna go back home. And when asked, is that your long-term plan to stay in Ethiopia? Yeah, I mean, I like our life in Ethiopia. It's, you know, something I set my mind to, and we've been doing it. I've been trying to learn Amharic and the culture, you know. So, you know, that's our plan to stay there. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I think that now that he's gonna be a year old before you know it, I think you need to consider where you're gonna raise him and what kind of school systems you want him to be in. I don't know if I quite believe that, to be honest. I just, hmm, I think she would prefer living in the US because all her family is there. You know, she doesn't really have any friends and whatnot. I don't know if I'm buying that. She just doesn't, I feel she just doesn't want to seem like she's unhappy because then people are gonna be like, see, told you so, da 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 da. But I feel really and truly she'd wanna go back to the US. Benny doesn't really wanna live in the US, so he, he wants to stay in Ethiopia, even though, you know, there might be better opportunities for him in the US. She did mention that she had applied for the K-1 visa, but of course, the coronavirus had to spoil their plans and the embassy was closed. So she's not even sure if the application is being processed. I mean, everything's shut down, right? So yeah, they took her money all right, but her papers are probably just sitting there. But she at least wanted to have the option of, hey, going to the US if need be. Because her mom's like, you know, it's gonna take a while anyway. At least have this in your back pocket, which I feel is a good idea. So it will be interesting to see if, hey, they're gonna stay in Ethiopia or make that leap and live in the US. That's pretty much all with Ari and Benny. Wasn't very exciting at all. On to the next. Ellie and Victor. Ellie and Victor have actually rented an apartment in San Andreas because living in a hotel is is kind of, not kind of, it is expensive because there's no kitchen there. So I imagine they have to eat out all the time. So they decided to rent an apartment. That way they can cook and they, I shouldn't even say they because he don't pay for anything. Ellie can save some money. And in the meantime, they can go back and forth to from San Andreas to Providencia to clean up their home. Ellie decides to bring up the cheating incident. You actually moved in with this person. You guys were talking about like having kids. At least that's what she said. <laughs> that's crazy. I just like, it was during the quarantine and I didn't even mean most of the things that we were talking about. Yeah, 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 of course. You're just trying to wiggle your way out of this one, you little sneaky snake. He's like, she never gave me any money or anything. And Ellie's like, well, wasn't she going to get you a motorcycle? And he's like, no, I didn't want a motorcycle. And Ellie's like, well, I know that you like them. Mm, I can believe that he probably hinted or asked for one. He never asked her for a bike, never asked her for clothes. Never ask for money or anything. Again, I don't buy that. I don't think he's using me for money. I feel like he really loves me, but of course it's in the back of my head because I've sent him money to help him out in the past, but maybe that's just my own insecurities talking. I know I, I messed up on and I would always or forever asking you to pardon me for that and it's something I would never do again. I could see right through him. I think he loves your money. Something about him I just don't trust at all. Now Ellie is hoping that they can just work on their relationship and just put this all behind them and never talk about it again. The next day they decide to go to the hardware store so that they can buy some supplies to rebuild their home when they go to Providencia the next morning. Victor's talking about 
they need a machete, a drill, a hammer, and Ellie's wondering, how are we gonna pay for all this? Is this stuff gonna be expensive? It's like, this guy, he's saying we need this, this, and that. He's not handing over any money. It's all Ellie that has to pay for it. This one, you think? 558. 558. Oh my god, that's really expensive. I could get a drill in the U.S. for like $50. Yeah? Yeah. I don't think that Victor, like, necessarily sees the value of money sometimes. I think he thinks I'm American and I just have, like, mad money. That's it for those guys. Not too exciting at all. Now, haha, <laughs> we're gonna go on to Jenny and Simit, my favorite couple. Jenny decides to meet up with her bestie. I think that's her only friend that she has in India. That's, that's quite sad, poor thing. But they decide to meet up to have a bite to eat and so she can just catch her up on everything. The bestie supports their relationship 1000%, but she is on the side of the mother that the age gap, it is quite large and that's not something that's common in India. If I would been in Sumit's place, then my mother would have also reacted in the same way. It's always a struggle with his mom, but you know what she said? What? She wants to come and live with us in our house. Okay. And I will train you how to become a traditional Indian wife. What the problem is, is I'm not a young Indian girl, so I don't need someone to come and train me how to do things in my house. Yeah, but that's, I think, cultural difference. She then explains that it's actually common for the mother-in-law, like the family, to move in to the household. Just to, you know, you know, make sure that things are going smoothly, you know, teach you if you need to be taught things. So it's not uncommon at all. Good old Jenny, of course, says, well, you have to remember I'm American. And the best friend's like, no, you you're in India now, so yeah, you're American, but you need to, you need to adapt. You're in India, that's how it goes here. And you know what? She's right. You're not in America anymore. You know, Jenny should be happy. At least she went to the counseling, which is, wow, that was shocking to me. And at least she's even entertaining moving in to show Jenny the ropes because she's not for the relationship. So at least this is a step in the right direction. So after that chat, Jenny and Sumit, they decide to compromise. They're gonna have the parents move in for a couple of days. So Sumit and I have ordered some furniture to be ready for them in the guest room. Bye, thank you. Oh yeah. I still think that by trying to make me into a traditional Indian wife, they're just trying to manipulate me and get me to fail. They know I'm gonna fail. But Samir keeps telling me to stay positive, so that's what I'm trying to do. Now apparently, Jenny is living her best life in India. Her best life, because she's free to do whatever she wants. She can wake up late, she can do whatever she wants. Back home in the United States, she'd be working six or seven days a week. And she'd have a whole bunch of bills, so at least in India, She's carefree. She can do as she wants. She just got to put up with the parents. That's all. Jenny was under the impression that Samit was happy with their life, but uh, I guess not. She explains that this is a major adjustment for her, and I get what she's saying, but Samit is missing his parents. I guess he's missing being taken care of and pampered and babied because he's not getting that with Jenny, right? So I guess he's missing all of that. Let me tell you, that was the wrong thing for him to say, missing his parents because she exploded. I live in a completely different country than my whole entire everyone. Right. And you're talking about, you can go visit your parents at any time. So what Anytime. does it mean that I, I should not allow to miss my parents? No, you... But I just said that I sometimes I miss you my can parents. You can miss your parents. You can miss your parents. You can go visit them saying, anytime. Can I go visit my daughters anytime? Can. I just said like I... Sometimes All you want to do is stand here and argue and fight with me. Poor Samit wants to go back to a normal life. He feels that what they're doing is not quite normal. It's not what normal people in India do. Normal people, you know, like his family, they wake up early. Jenny and Samit are like waking up super late. I'm not a morning person myself, but they wake up late. He wants Jenny to take care of him like normal married 
Indian couples do. Jenny says she, you know, this is stressful for her because this is something new. And he said, well, you know, just have a positive mind and things will work out. Hopefully. Jenny's in the kitchen, the kitchen, preparing for the parents to arrive. She's cleaning up the dishes. Submit warns her it's it's not gonna be easy. The parents are gonna be hard on us because they live a, they live a totally different lifestyle, right? How we live and how they live is it's complete opposite. And in fact, they need to shift their lifestyle to mimic how the parents are living because that's the Indian way of living. Jenny, of course, is nervous and, and scared and she said, you know what, all I ask is that you just have my back, defend me if they start, you know, attacking, just be there for me. He says, you know, I, I can't stop them from the way that they're acting because that's gonna cause a huge argument. And an argument is something that he wants to avoid. He doesn't even want to go down that road. She needs to be happy and polite and just try. His parents arrive. Oh goodness me, it's gonna get juicy. They go to the living room, sit down. Within seconds, within seconds. Did you know? <laughs> this shows all of our marks of our drinks. <laughs> right away, she's pointing at the rings on the coffee table, like, this is how it's all gonna be. And then, the moment you've been waiting for. She says, let me see the rest of the house. Off to the kitchen they go. Are slip pe ye yahan pe ye sab nahi hona chahiye sab apni jagah set hona chahiye. Ye change change nothing should be on the slab. Clean. Need to clean. Okay. Ye jo saaf karte na you need to take the trash out. Ooh, she was going in. Cement was like, where's the broom? Jenny's like, I don't know where the broom was. Now listen, my thing is, if you clean often, you're gonna know where that broom is. And I'm not blaming just Jenny. Cement should know where the broom is as well. If y'all clean a lot, you should know where the broom is. And both of you should be cleaning. Like I'm seeing a lot of hate on Jenny saying that she's nasty and this, this and that. Okay, but Sumit is a grown man. They both make mess, in my opinion. They both should be cleaning. No, I mean, what, is he just gonna sit there and she does everything? Like, come on now. You can't, you, you, the blame can't be put solely on her. Unless Jenny is okay with doing every single thing and Sumit doesn't have to do a lick of work. A lick of work. Well then Jenny, you gotta do better. I'm also seeing as well that this whole scene might have been staged because we've never seen their place look like that and it's kind of true. I've been wondering if it was staged as well, of course, for views. TLC wants those views. They want the views. We all want views. I want views too. But I mean, just even looking at their living room, it wasn't so messy. Their bedroom, I've never seen it really messy. You know, the areas that we do see it's not really messy and then just to see the kitchen like that i don't know man what do you guys think let me know in the comments below <sighs> jenny ye sab karna padega jenny ah oh, what she saying don't Daily. don't feel mad this is no i'm it's bahar nikalo kuda ah ye reh gaya Listen, lady, the, the sighing, that needed to stop, okay? Like, seriously, don't, don't be sighing to do something that you should be doing, the both of you should be doing. Adults have chores. 
okay? Wh what are you sighing for? Samit actually likes that his mother is showing her how to clean, but the backhanded compliment. Not to say that Jenny doesn't do a good job, no, that's exactly what you're trying to say, okay? But he just likes how his mama does the cleaning. Of course, he's such a mama's boy. Smith's mom is just trying to make me feel bad, she's trying to make me look bad, and she's just trying to find reasons to say Jenny is not good enough for my son. I just feel like this is going to ruin our relationship, and I wish that they would just leave now. Man, Jenny, all I gotta say is gonna be a rough two days for you, sweetheart. A rough two days. But in her defense, it must be hard because you have the way that you do things and to have somebody come into your home and be like, do this, do this, do that, and you're a grown woman, that, that, that kinda sucks, you, you know, but the kitchen was nasty, y'all. I can't even deny it. And another thing that I've been seeing online is that well, they're living a third world country. Yes, they are. But it doesn't excuse mess. Okay, I don't care if it's a third world country or if you're living in Canada or the US, whatever. Your place should be tidy. You know, it, there, there's no excuse. Unless you're going through a severe depression because you know it might be hard for you to do a little cleaning. Maybe Jenny is depressed, who knows. But if not, there is no excuse. It shouldn't look like a pigsty. You know what I'm saying? That's everything to my recap. Let me know your thoughts on the episode, if you saw it yourself. What do you think about Jenny and Samit? I'm not just saying Jenny's kitchen, okay? It's both of their kitchen. Let me know your thoughts on their kitchen, if you think it was gross or, you know, it was normal. Comment down below and let me know. Overall, the episode, meh. It was okay. Of course, the highlight was Jenny and Cement in the kitchen, but you know, it was meh. It was all right. I hope the next episode will be more entertaining. Maybe we'll see more of that lovely kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed this recap, give me a thumbs up. I'd love to see that and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my recaps. Thanks for watching my beautiful peeps and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye!